Wooden trays with radiused bottoms not only look more refined, but they also make it easier to grab things out of them. So today, on Catterday, let's make a simple wooden tray using Curb I'd Create and a bowl bit on the Shape Oko. I'll start by defining my setup. I want my canvas to be at least 5 or 6 inches in each dimension, and I'll assume my stock is 0.76 or 0.77 inches thick. The reason for having this extra margin is that I don't want the first cut layer to be too deep. If the stock is thicker than expected or slightly elevated by double-sided tape, then your first toolpath step down will be pushing through more material than the rest of the toolpath layers. This can produce more deflection in the tool and the machine and lead to visible lines on the walls. I'll set my origin to the bottom of the stock and then get to designing. We really only need two shapes to define this tray, the inner and outer profile. I'll start by drawing a hexagon with about a 2 inch radius, then I'll draw another one that's offset from the first by about a quarter inch. I'm doing this with the offset feature to ensure that the shapes are perfectly concentric. And that's all we need to do before we move on to the next step which is making toolpaths. But before we can do that, we need to add our bowl bit to the tool library. I'm going to plug it in as a generic square end mill with a 3 quarter inch diameter. Don't worry about programming in the radiused edges, the preview will show a square cut but you know it's going to be rounded. I'm going to select my inner contour and apply a pocketing toolpath to it. For speeds and feeds with this 3 quarter inch cutter, I'm going to say 18,000 RPM, a feed rate of about 35 inches per minute, and a plunge rate of 15 inches per minute. Your step over should be less than the diameter of the flat part of your bowl bit. Mine has a quarter inch radius on each side and a quarter inch flat in the middle. I'll set my step over to 0.2 inches. For the depth of this pocket, I'll stop about 0.15 inches, or around 4 millimeters from the bottom of the stock. Before I go on to profile around the outside, I'm going to take a moment to reduce the height of my tray by pocketing away the top edge. A quarter inch end mill won't really fit between the lines, so Carbide Create will freak out if you tell it that's what you're using. But if you tell Create that you're using an eighth inch tool, but actually have a quarter inch tool in the router, it'll happily generate a toolpath in the selected region. I'll use this pocket toolpath to reduce the height of my tray by one millimeter. If you're using lumber with a rough side or there are any scratches or blemishes that you want to hide, this is the place to do it. And now, we can finally run a contour around the outside of the tray. Quarter inch end mill, about 50 inches per minute, 0.08 inches or 2 millimeters per step down, and tabs centered on the walls. I'll export the toolpath for the bowl bit by itself and the last two operations together. Carbide motion might prompt you for a tool change between the upper pocket and the outer contour toolpaths, but since you're keeping the same tool in the machine, you can just click through it. Here I have my stock, which is a small offcut of maple clamped to my Shape Oko's bed. You should probably use three clamps for redundancy, but do as I say, not as I do. I'll touch off on the wasteboard with the bowl bit and run the first operation. These larger diameter tools slice through wood super fast and cleanly, resulting in nice fluffy shavings and smooth walls. Swap in the quarter inch end mill when you're done, touch it off, and run the second program. And when all that is finished, you can cut through the tabs however you want and use a router bit with a bearing to clean up the bottom edge. This could be a flush trim bit, chamfer bit, but I like using a roundover bit to match the radius on the inside. Do a little hand sanding to clean up the rest of the profiles and maybe the floor of the pocket, wipe on a protective finish, and you have a super easy to make catch-all tray. Hope this video gives you a little project inspiration for this weekend. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up, and if you have any other simple projects you'd like to see us demonstrate, drop them in the comments below. I can't promise we'll hit all of them, but if it's a good idea, we'll try to do it. Good luck, and have fun machining your own projects, folks.